Hello there, I'm Azara Tagaya and you're watching Nightline, the top stories. Water supply in Selangor to be fully restored by Tuesday. And 70 stilt houses collapse after being hit by tidal surge. The Sungai Semenyih and Bukit Tampoi water treatment plants have resumed operations on Sunday. Therefore, Islango confirmed that the water supply at the affected areas is expected to be fully restored by 6 a.m. on Tuesday. In a statement on Sunday, Selango Tourism, Environment, Green Technology and Orang Asli Affairs Committee Chairman He Loi Sian said both water treatment plants resumed operations after recording a zero threshold odor number, TON, for three consecutive times. Despite this, the Selango Water Management Authority, LUAS, will continue to closely monitor the pollution, the flow of Sungai Limomanis and Sungai Semenye, as mitigation steps for immediate prevention if any residue is detected at the locations involved. Elaborating on mitigation measures, he said two suction tankers with a capacity of 11 and 6 tons were used to remove the remaining liquid along 500 metres of the drain. A total of 45 bags of activated carbon, equivalent to around 1.6 tons, have also been placed at the location, including the polluted area. The pollution mitigation action was also aided by the release of the Semenye Dam water of around 360 million litres per day to help increase the dilution rate in Sungai Semenye. The pollution occurred after an incident involving a container lorry transporting essence of perfume oil which spilled into a river that connects with Sungai Semenye, resulting in both water treatment plants to temporarily stop their operations and causing 472 areas in four districts in Selangor and one in Putrajaya to experience unscheduled water supply disruptions. About 70 stilt houses at Kampong Forest in Sandakan Sabah collapsed after being hit by a tidal surge following a high tide phenomenon on Saturday night. Following the incident, police have advised residents in coastal areas in the district to vacate their homes as a precaution as the high tide phenomenon is expected to occur again on Sunday night and Monday night. Sandakan District Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Abdul Fuad Abdul Malik said the Malaysian Meteorological Department Met Malaysia has also issued a continuous rain alert in the area until Monday. Monday. He added that aside from Kampung Forest, Kampung Tinusadua was also experiencing high tide and strong waves. However, none of the houses in the village were damaged. So far, no casualties have been reported, but residents in risk areas were reminded to follow instructions issued by security personnel, especially for them to evacuate. The high tide phenomenon, which hit Kampung Forest at about 10 p.m., affected more than 300 residents, most of whom were evacuated to the temporary relief centre at SK Sungai Anip Dua. Meanwhile, Sandakan Member of Parliament Vivian Wong said she will discuss with the Sandakan Municipal Council to request the use of available housing units under the People's Housing Programme as temporary accommodation for the affected victims. In the meantime, the flood situation in Trangganu, Kelantan, Pera and Sarawak is improving as more residents were allowed to return home on Sunday. However, the number of evacuees in Sabah continues to rise due to the high tide phenomenon. Currently, there are 6,990 evacuees in five states. According to the Trangganu Disaster Management Committee Secretariat, the number of flood victims in the state decreased to 1,628 people from 3,908 earlier in the evening. All of them are being housed in 13 relief centres operating in four districts. In Glantan, the number of flood victims decreased to 5,037, with 19 relief centres opened in the districts of Pasemas and Tumpat. Perak recorded a number of 62 people housed at one flood relief centre in Hile Pera as of 10pm. In Sabah, the number of flood evacuees in Kota Balut dropped to 143 people from 212 people earlier in the evening. Meanwhile, the number of residents in coastal areas, especially those living in stilt houses in Sandakan, Kota Kinabalu and Pitas, who were evacuated due to the high tide phenomenon, rose to 1,288 people compared to 1,151 people earlier in the day. In Sarawak, the number of flood evacuees remained at 84 people, taking shelter at one relief centre in Syrian. 
Rainy weather and risky conditions at Ground Zero were among some of the biggest challenges faced by personnel involved in the search and rescue operation at the Father's Organic Farm landslide site in Batangkali, which officially ended on Sunday. Inspector General of Police, Tansri Akril Sani Abdullah Sani, said despite such challenges, the rescuers managed to pull through in finding all the victims in the tragedy. Speaking at a media conference on Sunday, Tansri Akril Sani informed that the search and rescue operation officially ceased at noon. The decision was made after the police confirmed that there were no other missing victims. Kawasan bencana tersebut agak ber, berisiko tinggi. Berisiko tinggi. Jadi uh, itulah cabaran utama kita. Yang lain saya tidak nampak. Dari segi uh, guna tenaga sumber manusia, kita berada kita berkadar bahu secara secara rapat dari segi keperluan aset-aset jentera dan supamanya kita tidak dapat sebarang masalah He however said that agencies such as the Public Works Department, the Department of Survey and Mapping, the Minerals and Geoscience Department and the Hulu Selangor Municipal Council are still conducting technical works at the site. In the meantime, Tansri Akril Sani had expressed hope that the operation would become a template for future search and rescue operations, adding that each agency played its role as outlined in the National Security Council Directive NSC20, ensuring that there was no overlapping in duties. The landslide that hit in the early hours of December 16 took the lives of 31 victims, comprising of 18 adults and 13 children, while 61 survivors managed to evacuate safely. The search and rescue operation involved over 250 rescue personnel from various agencies, as well as K-9 units working tirelessly to locate victims. Meanwhile, the families of eight victims killed in the Batangkali landslide in Selangor received funds from the government totaling 80,000 ringgit. The donations to the two families were presented by Prime Minister's Senior Political Secretary, Datuk Sri Shamsul Iskandar Mat Akin, in Kampung Machap Baru, Melaka. On behalf of the Prime Minister, Datuk Sri Shamsul presented the donations of 10,000 ringgit for each of the victims to 54-year-old Lai Hua Kyong and 63-year-old Tai Seng Foy, who each lost four family members in the tragedy. Yalah, walaupun uh, ini merupakan ujian yang besar bagi mereka, tetapi kita harapkan uh, sedikit sumbangan daripada Perdana Menteri dan Kerajaan dapat meringankan uh, beban uh, terutamanya kesedihan mereka yang terpaksa ditanggung oleh keluarga di atas uh, pembagian yang uh, yang yang begini ya, yang satu perkara yang tentunya amat menyedihkan. Lai lost four members of his family in the tragedy. His son, 33-year-old Lai Chi Sum, daughter-in-law Lai Si Tin, also 33, and his two grandchildren, six-year-old Giselle Lai Yu Zi and two-year-old Jonas Lai Zi Kai. While Tai also lost his son, 35-year-old Tai Chang Lin, 34-year-old daughter-in-law Yu Siu Pei, and two grandchildren, seven-year-old Tai Jing Ki and four-year-old Tai Jing Ru. Datuk Sri Shamsul said the Prime Minister also conveyed his utmost gratitude to the entire search and rescue team for working tirelessly in the search for the victims. He said the Prime Minister and the government value their efforts and high level of commitment and hopes they can be an example to other agencies to be able to work as a team and strive to provide the best service to the people. The Sarawak government has submitted to the federal government the formula for the annual special grant to be given to the state under Article 11D of the federal constitution. Its Premier, Tansri Abang Johari Tunoping, said the federal government was now considering the formula. Harapan saya ialah supaya mereka dapat memahami rationalise formula kita yang saya nampak adalah adil kepada kerajaan pusat dan juga kerajaan kita melandaskan kepada uh, apa nama ni, revenue uh, yang didapati oleh uh, uh, kerajaan persekutuan daripada negeri Sarawak. Tan Sri Abang Johari said this to the media after attending a Christmas open house hosted by Deputy Premier Dato' Amar Douglas Uga in Kuching on Sunday. He said the formula was one of the matters pertaining to the Malaysia Agreement 1963 or MA63 submitted by the state government to Deputy Prime Minister Dato' Sri Fadila Yusof for consideration. On Saturday, Dato' Sri Fadila said the government will announce several matters that have been agreed on regarding MA63 on January 4th next year. 
Christmas this year was celebrated in a more lively atmosphere by Malaysian Christians all over the country on Sunday. The special holiday is not only about observing Christmas rituals and traditions, but also a chance to strengthen familial bonds and foster unity among the people. Churches across the country were once again filled with their congregations and visitors after large-scale festive celebrations in the past two years were hampered by public health restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In Selangor, over 800 people, both young and old, attended Christmas Mass and prayers at the Church of the Divine Mercy in Shah Alam. The churchgoers who were dressed up for the occasion, with the majority wearing face masks, included around 600 people from Sabah and Sarawak who are living in the surrounding areas. Although they were unable to return to their hometowns to be with their loved ones, they were still thankful that they were able to celebrate Christmas with their friends and neighbours and nurture the spirit of togetherness within the community. Malaysia ni memang unik, ya. Yeah? Walaupun uh, pelbagai bangsa, namun saling uh, memberi ucapan kepada uh, tak, tak kira bangsa agama, ya. Yeah? Orang Malaysia sangat ramah tamah mengucapkan selamat hari Christmas kepada uh, uh, yang merayakan uh, hari Christmas ini. Uh, sambutan orang sekeliling baik sebab uh, kawan-kawan pun banyak yang berbilang bangsa jadi uh, semalam pun banyak yang wish juga lah. Uh. Although some of them have to be apart from their families this holiday season, they still made preparations for Christmas, albeit moderately. Sebelum-sebelum ni kita buat kuih moy, uh, buat biskut raya uh, dengan tahun ni pun kita dah buat juga lah. Kalau dekat sebelum-sebelum ni kita merayakan dekat kampung kan, uh, kita ber, uh, dengan family uh, kita buat kuih moy lah. Tapi tahun ni tak balik seperti macam biasa-biasa je lah dengan saudara mara dekat, dekat, dekat KL. Kami umat KUVM CDM Shah Alam ingin mengucapkan selamat hari Christmas dan tahun baru. Ho ho ho. In Malacca, the festive mood of Christmas returned to the Portuguese settlement in Banda Hile this year after two years of muted celebrations due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Not only were the festivities more joyful, the houses in the neighbourhood, decked with colourful decorations and lights, also made the celebration even more special. For the local Christian community, it has been their long-standing tradition to celebrate Christmas in a grand manner by decorating their homes with coloured bulbs, bells, blinking lights, advent wreath and candles, as well as Christmas trees. This annual affair transformed the settlement into a Christmas wonderland, drawing even non-Christian visitors and tourists to soak in the dazzling atmosphere. According to the village's Community Development and Security Committee, JPKK Chairperson Marina Linda Danka, this year's Christmas celebration was more meaningful as their children and their families were able to return home. Dia meriah sikit sebab uh, dah lama COVID. Eh. Tahun lepas pun kita ada sambutan tapi uh, ada banyak orang tu dia sedikit was-was. Uh, so bukan ramai yang uh, balik mengunjung keluarga besar macam tu lah. Tapi uh, tahun ni ramai. Uh, macam semalam saya ingat dekat kampung aja ada dekat 10,000 orang mengunjung. Sebab uh, orang yang datang tu melawat dekat kampung ni tak berhenti-henti. She added that although the Christmas traditions in the Portuguese settlement are similar to the rest of the country, one difference would be the home-cooked Portuguese food served for the family. These special dishes such as curry de bal and roasted chicken, which have been passed down over many generations, are a must-have on Christmas Day. Attending open houses is also a common tradition, just like during other festive celebrations in the country. Bom Natal, bom ano. Meanwhile, the unpredictable weather over several areas in Sabah has failed to put a damper on the Christmas holiday cheer among the people in the state. Some 5,000 people from all walks of life attended a Christmas open house hosted by Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives Minister Dato Iwan Benedict in Penampang on Sunday. The Penampang Member of Parliament said although the celebration was held moderately, it was meaningful as he could build closer relations with the local business community and residents. Kita ambil, uh... Tindakan untuk berhati-hati 
supaya kita dapat berjaga-jaga kerana nyawa itu lebih penting daripada uh, sambutan. Tetapi dalam keadaan di mana kita masih boleh menyambut sambutan itu, kita raihkan dengan kesederhanaan dan uh, gunakan kesempatan itu untuk uh, memperkasahkan uh, hubungan uh, dalam masyarakat kita. Also attending the open house was Sabah Chief Minister Datuk Sri Haji Jinor as well as other state and party leaders. Paparan sepanjang tahun 2022. Gelombang iklim dan tragedi. Transformasi landscape politik. Sesungguhnya bersumpah. Kemelut ekonomi global. Pembasan 2022. Sabtu, 5.30 petang di TV3. Coming up next, 18 dead as winter storm dampens Christmas weekend across US. Back now with the foreign news. A fearsome winter storm continued to pummel parts of the United States with blizzard conditions, leaving at least 18 people dead due to exposure and car crashes on icy roads. The bomb cyclone storm, one of the most powerful in decades, has forced the cancellation of more than 3,000 U.S. flights on Saturday, stranding thousands of travelers who were making last-minute dashes for Christmas. The storm, now in its third straight day, was nearly unprecedented in its scope, stretching from the Great Lakes near Canada to the Rio Grande along the border with Mexico. The plummeting temperatures brought the coldest Christmas Eve on record to some parts of the country, including in Washington, D.C. Power systems across the U.S. were also under strain due to rising demand for heat and storm-related damage to transmission lines. At least four people died overnight and three were missing in Spain after a bus plunged into a river while crossing a bridge in the country's northwestern Galicia region. Authorities on Sunday said the accident, which occurred on Saturday night near the border with Portugal, took place at a spot with a steep gradient, making access difficult to locate the remaining three. The rescue operations had to be suspended overnight due to bad weather, but resumed Sunday morning. The emergency services said two corpses had been recovered, while two survivors, the bus driver and a passenger, had been rescued and taken to hospital. It was understood that the bus was carrying people visiting their loved ones jailed in Monterosso in central Galicia. The bus driver had tested negative for alcohol. In the UK, a murder investigation has been launched after a woman was fatally shot at a pub near Liverpool on Christmas Eve. Merseyside police officers were called to the Lighthouse Inn in Wallasey Village at about 11.50pm local time on Saturday and they found three men and the female victim with gunshot wounds. The woman was later pronounced dead. Detective Superintendent Dave McCochran said the shooting happened at a busy venue full of young people. He also confirmed that many others suffered minor injuries in the shooting.
Still to come, United shows strong interest in Gakpo. Back with sports football, the UAE Pro League, Al Ain and Al Wasal settled for a point each after playing out a one-all draw in match day 12 at Hazar bin Zaid Stadium in Al Ain on Tuesday. Al Ain struck first in the eighth minute when Togolisi Kojo Laba provided the finishing for an inviting cross, his 12th goal of the season. The lead lasted for about 25 minutes when Al Wasal equalised through Fabio Lima. Both sides had several chances to take the winner, but they were denied either by the crossbar or the goalkeepers. The third consecutive draw for the reigning champions kept them in seventh place on the ranking table with 19 points and three points adrift of Al Wasal in fifth. Still on football, English Premier League side Manchester United are fully expecting to complete a deal for PSV winger Kobe Gakpo with the club greenlighting a January transfer. United's primary focus next month is replacing Cristiano Ronaldo, with Gakpo top of their shortlist to add some attacking depth after a superb first half of the season for club and country. The 23-year-old was Netherlands' top scorer with three goals as they reached the quarter-finals at the World Cup. That added to his impressive haul at club level, where Gakpo has notched 36 goal contributions in just 34 matches this season. The winger's price tag looked to be spiralling out of control at one point, having gone up from 42 million US dollars last summer when United were first interested to a whopping 78 million US dollars after his exploits in Qatar. However, some local media reported earlier this week that United's initial 51.8 million US dollar offer was just about 2 million shy of what PSV are realistically looking for. United are back in action on December 27th when they host not Nottingham Forest at Old Trafford. Restaurant audits shut after video of rat goes viral. This and more from the local front after this breather.
Welcome back. Now in Perak, the police are working to track down two men seen attacking each other with helmets as shown in a video clip that has gone viral on social media. Ipo District Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Yahya Hassan said police came across the video after it was uploaded to Facebook. In the 22nd clip, the two motorcyclists were seen attacking each other with their helmets while another person looked on. The incident is believed to have happened at Lalwan Klebang Jaya, Chamor, on a date and time which has yet to be ascertained. As such, a police report has been lodged and police are tracking down the men involved in the incident to help in the investigation. The case is being investigated under Section 160 of the Penal Code for committing an affray. The health ministry has ordered a restaurant in Pandah Indah, Kuala Lumpur, to be closed for 14 days over food safety and hygiene violations. This came after a video of a rat munching on fried chicken in a food warming compartment at the restaurant went viral on social media. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said the closure was in accordance with Section 11 of the Food Act. He said the action was taken following an inspection carried out by the Health Enforcement Team of the Food Safety and Quality Division from the Selangor State Health Department and the Hululanga District Health Office on Saturday, which found that the restaurant's cleanliness level was unsatisfactory. Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham said the restaurant was also slapped with six compound notices under the food hygiene regulations over numerous food safety and hygiene-related violations. He said the ministry urged the public, especially food business owners and food handlers, to exercise joint responsibility in ensuring food safety to prevent foodborne illnesses. On Friday, it was reported that the health ministry had asked members of the public to provide information regarding the video showing a rat nibbling on food which was on display at a local eatery. The video was uploaded on Twitter by a user who claimed that it happened while they were eating at the premises. Over in Pulau Pinang, police crippled a syndicate involved in processing ketum leaves and the sale of ketum water with the arrest of three men and the seizure of 105 kilograms of the leaves in a raid at a house in Jalan Pematang Damar Laut, Bayan Lepas on Saturday. The Barat Daya District Police in a statement on Sunday said the raid was conducted following a tip-off and intelligence work by the police. During the raid, the police also seized 1,545 litres of ketum water, cooking utensils and a gas tank. Total seizures were estimated to be worth 16,500 ringgit. The suspects, all unemployed and aged between 22 and 26, are in remand for four days for investigation under the Poisons Act. Nightline draws to a close this time around. Before we leave, let's take a look at the 9th National Public Ice and Snow Season in China, a public event promoting winter sports with nearly 1,500 ice and snow activities scheduled. The event, which is attracting skiers from around the world with its vast area of natural powder snow, is expected to draw 150 million participants. With that, I'm Azara Tagaya. Thank you for watching and take care.